How's it going? I'm Apoc. This is my first Lens Studio tutorial. Today we are going to make an animated GIF pop up on the screen on tap and animate on tap. So when someone taps the screen, the GIF pops up and starts playing. That's what we're going to create. It's very simple. And it goes into starting your first little scripting, really. So we're going to be using scripts and sprites today. Let's start off with importing our animation. You can find free GIFs to use using Giphy, and then you just hit add and use one of these. We'll be using a billboard today. I'm not going to import a uh, GIF like this because it's pretty simple since it sort of attaches it and all that for you. We are going to go from this GIF I downloaded here, just going to drag and drop it into the resources. Cool. So if you click on it, there is a few different things in here. There's always play, ping pong, reverse. Reverse plays it backwards. Ping pong plays it forwards, backwards, forwards, backwards while it's always playing. Always play is just if it's always going to be playing or you have to manually uh, start the playing using a script. I'm going to leave it on always play for now just to show that it's working. And you can also change the duration. So higher duration slows it down. Um, shorter makes faster. All right. So we were working in the 2D space. The lighting is really for 3D, so we don't need this. We're just going to remove it. Now, since we're doing a, an effect, we want it right on the screen. We don't want it to be away from the screen or anything or in a 3D space where you have to like turn away from it and all that. We're just doing 2D. For 2D things, you want to use billboards. Billboard basically just sticks everything in the same 2D plane. doesn't have depth or anything like that. It's just right there on the screen. So when you add a billboard camera, it comes with one sprite. And this is the sprite we're going to be using. You can see it's aligned to this camera. This camera is an orthographic camera instead of perspective. And now we just need to change the texture to our Corgi here. And now he's on there. Amazing. We're going to rename this now so we can keep track of it. So name that sprite Corgi. Now X and Y are sort of acting like a 3D thing when you try to rotate them. Z is actually the rotation you probably want. So if we do like 90 degrees here, that'll do that. You can also drag it with your mouse here and resize it with your mouse. There's a rotation at the bottom. The reason I'm doing that is because I want this to be on the side, sort of like that. I don't know why, I just felt like that was right. Okay, so now, we got to make it pop up on tap. How are we going to make it appear when someone taps it? How are we going to hide it initially? Let's just start off by scripting. Um, we want to add a script. So we're going to go to add new script, rename this Corgi. Now I have to attach that script to something. There's orthographic camera and camera. We're going to run this script using the tap event that comes with the script component. So you need to add it to whatever you want to be tapped. And since we're going to be hiding the sprite, we can't add it to the sprite because if it's not there, you can't tap it. We're going to attach it to the camera because this is the main camera. And anywhere you tap, it's going to recognize that there's a tap event happening. So we're going to add the script. So add component, script. Now add a script, you just click there, click your Corgi one we just made. Change this initialized event to tap, which is at the very bottom. So now on tap, the script is running. Let's demonstrate that for you. So print, if, this is JavaScript code, by the way. If you're a web developer, you might be used to doing console.log. That is not a thing. In this, you have to use print and then a string. It has to be a string. If you print a number or something like that, 
it is going to crash line studio or give you an error it crashes for me so do not print anything but strings we're just going to print tap exclamation point and you close the parentheses and that so now when we click on the screen here no matter where we click it says tapped cool one thing I want to put here if you want to play around with this if you do string parentheses and then any number you want that is how you convert it uh, anything into a string so if you do print around that now you can log variables that are numbers or just console.log or not console.log print a number so string parentheses and inside the parentheses is where you put the number just to note if you're testing all right now we want to make this animation play whenever we tap it so by we're going to click back on our quirky texture here and we want to turn off always play so we can make it play by ourselves go back into our script we're going to leave this here so we know it's running every time we tap it actually I'm going to start up here now we need to import this animation somehow to do that you do a comment with at so slash slash or space slash slash space at input input is making the input so it knows it needs to look for something then we need to input what we want to input so it's a component how do we know what we can input well we just go to the api so you come on lensstudio.snapchat.com click on reference api when you're here, you have all these buttons and components. What are these? Well, that's what you can input. Um, components are just all the objects and things on the other side uh, in your objects panel. So we want to input a sprite visual because that's what we made. We made the billboard. It made a 2D sprite. So we're going to input component.sprite visual, which I just copied from there to speed this up a bit. So the first thing is slash slash, then add input, space, component.spriteVisual, space, the name of what you're inputting. We're going to call this one QWERTY, apply changes. Go back to our camera where the script component is, and you can see our input here called QWERTY has been made for us. We have to click this here, then click through until you find your QWERTY sprite. Click OK to add it, and now it's attached to our script. So to ask, access things you input, it's script dot the name. So we can put it as script dot query. So we've accessed it now. So our animation lies in the texture. Let's go back here. And just look at the sprite for a moment. What contains the texture is hard to show you. So I'm going to actually make a new material here just to give you a demonstration. This texture is actually coming from the material. So if we click on unlit here, which is a different material, not the one we're using, but it's there. It's coming from here, base texture. That's what it's using. And you can see this says pass zero. So uh, to access this texture, we have to go into the material, into the first pass of the material, into the base texture. So we can go in here, click on component.spriteVisual, and see how to get the material. Right there it says get material number index. So we want the first material. If you're uh, not a programmer, I'll just start with saying it's an array it starts at zero. So if you have five things, let's just do one, two, three, four, five. If I wanted to access one, and this is if this was an array, so let's put it in here. If I wanted to access one, I'd have to do zero because the first thing in an array is index zero, not index one. Okay, so it's what it wants is get material number index. So get material zero because we want that first material, which is at index zero because it's an array. Then, as I said, we need the pass because it's stored inside a pass. Oops. 
and they get the pass, how do we do that? Well, let's click on our material. Wow, right there, get pass. But if you go a little bit lower, there's main pass. I'm going to use main pass just because I want to. Main pass, the first pass, the material. That's exactly what we need. Or we can do get pass zero. We're going to use main pass. So main pass dot, doesn't take any parentheses after it. Main pass, because this is a property that is just the first one. It doesn't, it's not an array or anything, so it doesn't take parentheses. Okay, so main pass dot, then inside that is the base texture. As you can see here, how to get the base texture, I'm not sure is actually on this. Um, but we're going to go ahead and click on it anyway, just see if it's under pass. I'm not seeing it under here. It is there, pass.base text. That's what we need. Need. My voice just disappeared for a second. Um, but I guess it doesn't really want to, it doesn't show up in here. <laughs> but yeah, so pass.base text. That is what we need. And that's this one, so pass, base text. So we go back to our script, dot base text. Now we have an animated te texture. So how do we make this animated texture do things? Animated textures are, actually have their own controller, which is called the animated texture file provider click on that. So animated texture and file provider can be accessed from texture.control. That looks familiar because we have a texture. We just need to access the control inside of it. So base text.control. Right, so how do we play it now? Let's look at our methods. We have get playing frame is paused is playing pause play. There's play from frame and play. We're going to do play, and as you can see, it takes play, number of loops, and the number offset. Okay, so it's control dot play, number of loops, negative one is infinite. Um, so that's going to loop it forever. So we're going to use negative one, comma, zero, because we don't want it to be delayed. Then close the parentheses, put a semicolon at the end, because Lens Studio likes semicolons. Awesome. Hit apply. Now, when we tap, as you can see, it's playing. These errors are from my accident. I clicked the screen earlier. So we tap the screen. Hit this reset button at the top to restart it from the from right when the lens is open, essentially. So we hit the reset. Now I tap it. Look at that. It plays. Now we want it to be hidden. We're actually gonna get rid of the print now because we don't really need it if we just see the animation playing. We want this to be hidden by default. The easiest way to do that is using the enabled disabled. So to disable it, uncheck this checkbox right here. That disables it, it's hidden now, you can't see it. To enable it, it is script dot Corgi, because we're accessing the Corgi, dot enabled, equals a Boolean value, which is true or false. True. So dot enabled equals true. If you want to disable it again, it's false. So now when we tap the screen, it's going to enable the Corgi, so it's going to show up, and it's going to play the animation. Oh, you have to hit apply changes. Don't forget that. Now we click it. There it is. Awesome. There is another way to do this. You can change the alpha. So if you had this enabled and turn the alpha down, you can do that. However, that is a very complicated, overcomplicated thing when you can just use dot enabled. Uh, I wrote it out here, what it would look like. So if you wanted to change the alpha, it'd look like this. You have to change the base color. You change this from zero to one. So yeah. It's not, it's too much. Just use dot enabled, it'll simplify it for something simple like this. In the future, you might need to change the alpha.
But for something simple like this, dot enable works just fine. Cool, so we basically got our whole script done. You want to save your file now. I'm not going to save it because I don't really need to. But you want to save now. Make sure you have everything. You want to save all the time in Studio because Lens Studio often crashes, especially when you're especially when you're scripting. It leads to a lot of crashes at Lens Studio. Unfortunately, it doesn't handle a ton of events like infinite loops that get messed up. It crashes Lens Studio. So you want to save all the time, especially if you're about to add something to your script. All right, so we want it to tap and it shows up. Cool. If that's all you need, then you're done with the tutorial. But now I'm going to make it tap again to hide it. So we're using an if statement to do this. So if, now we need a true value. So if it's true, if it's enabled and that equals true, then we want to disable it. Well, dot enabled is already a Boolean. So we can just do script dot enabled, script dot corgi dot enabled, my bad, enabled. And that's all we need inside the parentheses. Then we use bracket, the uh, script editor inside Lens Studio. It's kind of meh, it doesn't format anything for you. Um, so yeah, my strips kind of look disgusting in here. Just tab those over. But wait, if it's enabled already, then we don't want it to be disabled. So we're just gonna put an explanation point in front of this. So it's gonna say, if that's false, then else. Or you could just put it, this inside the else and flip these around. But we're just gonna do it like this. So else, we can just copy this really put that down there close the brackets and we switch this to false now we have dot play but we don't want it to play let's go back to our animated texture file provider and we can see there's pause that might do it dot stop though stops it completely so let's go back in here and change it to dot stop we need the parentheses because it's a function. And now apply changes. So we click on it, click on it again, it hides it. So you can see it's working now. If you're doing something like this, you might want to come down here and turn on show Snapchat UI just so you know your animation's not being blocked by it. See that your here is a little bit, so I might want to move that up. Let's move it up a little bit. Cool, so there it is. Now just save it, submit your lens up here, or change the name of it, then apply it, then submit it. And thank you guys so much for watching. Please let me know what other tutorials you want to see. My name is Apoc. I'll see you guys in the next tutorial.